matcha cookies with you. I love anything matcha. Lattes, cookies, tiramisu, you name it, I'll eat it or drink it. And I think one of the reasons I like matcha so much is because not only are there so many great health benefits, but it also tastes really, really good and you can use it in a variety of different foods. So to get started on our matcha cookies today, um, as usual, we need butter, sugar, and then a combination here of your uh, flour, matcha powder, and baking soda. I mix it all together and then I have um, sifted it. And it's really important to make sure that you sift it. I know it seems like an easy step that you want to skip. But that's something that you really don't want to do because if you notice, after it's sifted, it has a really nice powder-like consistency that you really want. So what type of matcha powder can you use? Really, there are so many different types of matcha powder out there. It's really up to you and what kind that you want to use. The most important part that I find in looking for good matcha is that you definitely get what you pay for. So I want to make sure that I get a matcha powder that's finely ground and then also that it has a nice bright green color. Okay, You don't want a duller green color. The brighter the better. And then also with your white chocolate you can use um, the classic white chocolate chips but usually I like to have the best ingredients for all of my baking needs and so I'll use a good lint chocolate or any other European uh, good white chocolate um, that's really up to you. So let's go ahead and get started. You want to start out with creaming your butter and here I have my butter already softened. So I will just cream it. Many recipes will call for the butter to be melted. It's really a no right or wrong. I prefer to beat the butter. Um, I find that creamed butter tastes a lot better in the cookies for consistency than when the butter is melted. Either way, once the butter is either melted or creamed, I slowly add my white sugar. it's just a lot easier. But you can use your KitchenAid or any other machine that you have in the house. So after you've creamed all of the sugar with the butter, you want to slowly add your two eggs. So this original recipe came half. So the recipe that I'm giving you is actually a double of everything. But I found that even with doubled, it doesn't make that many cookies. So of course, depending on what your needs are, you could triple or quadruple the recipe as you see. So after I added the first egg, I'm going to now add the second egg. will usually tell you to keep the eggs at room temperature. But other recipes might have you use the eggs straight out of the refrigerator. So with this recipe, either is fine. And that's what I think I like about making the cookies because there's a lot of giving in ingredients in the cookies. So you want to get to this nice creamy mixture. It's a good time now to add your dry ingredients. So I have our sifted ingredients that I'm going to slowly add. And you may or may not know, matcha is derived from the word ma, meaning powdered, and cha, meaning tea. So matcha is just powdered tea. And most people think that it's from Japanese origin, which it is over 800 years, but originally the leaves, of course, came from China. 
before a Japanese monk brought it over to Japan. But of course we know that the Japanese have perfected it in the last few years. So slowly you want to just add all of your powder. Okay, so now that I've incorporated the last of the flour, matcha, and baking soda, now it's time to add my chocolate. And here you see that I've just chopped up the white chocolate. And you can do it by hand or you can do it the mixer. Because they're big enough chunks, I don't mind doing it with the mixer because I know it won't break down too much and it saves a little work when you don't have to do it by hand. So fortunately I'm not a big white chocolate fan or half of this bowl would have been eaten but there's something about matcha cookies that you just have to have white chocolate. So once you combined everything we're ready to put it on the cookie sheet. So we'll just pick it up one last bit. And then here we go. So after you've incorporated the white chocolate, you can just use any tablespoon in the house or if you have an ice cream scooper or any kind of a cookie scooper that you want more consistent cookies, just spoon the size that you want on the cookie sheet and it doesn't need to be buttered or greased because there's plenty of butter in the recipe. And you want to bake these cookies at 330 degrees for about six minutes. I always like to have my cookies a little undercooked because then they will continue to cook on the cookie sheet after you take them out of the oven. So here we go. Let's put them into the oven. Okay, so now we have the cookies in the oven. See you in six minutes. So after about eight minutes, I took the cookies out. And remember, depending on your oven, it could be anywhere between six to eight minutes. And so I just leave it there to cook for about another minute or two. And then I'll put it on the cooling rack. Do you like my gloves? I like anything with words in the house. So I have towels with words, I have gloves with words. So we will go ahead and wait for the cookies to cool and then put them on the rack. Okay, so at this point, the cookie looks like it's cool enough to go onto the rack. So I'm going to gently place them on the rack so they stop cooking. And then you can enjoy them. So fun fact about matcha, it's different than green tea in the sense that the leaves, before they are harvested, were grown in the shade. So it's much more of a laborious process than just the regular green tea. So grab your glass of milk, have a cookie, and enjoy. Thanks. See you next time.